I haven't met her enough times to have a real good feel for it, but I know that, as she says, she didn't know what she was going to do at the time, but she had a dream to do something, and she had an aha moment at one point, and then it got a little worse. So, Gloria, come on for sharing this, something about the warriors and what we felt we could do on it. Good evening, everyone. Well, tonight, we're here because of one woman, Jean Minerva Campbell, and the legacy that she and the Minerva Foundation have left our community. We've seen some amazing organizations like the Good Samaritan Society and the Youth Emergency Shelter um, that have been so, pl so blessed by the legacy um, of both Jean and, and, and both the Minerva. One of the mandates for Minerva is to help uh, new charities, like Little Warriors. Um, we're still only two years old, and I can remember my first presentation, there's still a number of people that uh, were at the original meeting that I kind of shared my vision and what I wanted to do with Little Warriors. And I'll never forget, it was the most grueling interview ever. Um, because I just had an idea, I had a vision, that um, I wanted to stand up and help prevent um, our kids from being raped and molested. And uh, it was something new, it hadn't been done, and so I was pretty nervous going in there. And um, so I think about maybe a half an hour into it, they'd ask me lots of questions, and um, Minerva became one of the first organizations to support Little Warriors. Pretty amazing. I'll never forget leaving there, I was like, not sure if I did okay because there was a couple of accountants in the room. Yeah, <laughs> that's always challenging. Yeah, there was a couple of accountants in there. And so the, the first year that uh, we worked with Minerva, they said, you know what, we're going to give you a shot. Um, both Angus and, and Jeff had uh, been such advocates um, for Little Warriors because getting your first uh, round of uh, donations as a, as a startup is. Uh, Ruling. Um, and then add the fact that it's child sexual abuse, right? There's uh, That's a pretty tough thing to kind of raise money for. So the first year they graciously uh, donated uh, $10,000. The second year I decided I'm going to bring our CFO, which is Ron Hempholt, because I'm like, there's three accountants, so I'm going to bring you. And so uh, I was a little more prepared uh, the second year. And so I uh, brought Ron, who um, is a CFO at WCB, so he knows all the and talk and so we had been informed that they were going to do things different knowing that their mandate was to really provide kind of you know seed money for a startup um, but I also remember the last year how, how tough it was with all the questions so um, they had said that this year they were going to put the majority of the funds to one organization and then do a couple kind of smaller donations and so I went in and asked them First of all, I told them all the things that we had done with the $10,000 and uh, had asked them, uh, you know, that we wanted to be kind of that, that one charity and what we, would, what we would do with the money. And I thought I'd share a story with you to kind of show you what we've done. And, and before I do, Little Warriors is really, it's about the prevention of child sexual abuse. My grandfather was a serial pedophile and uh, when I got well enough in my life, um, I wanted to stand up for kids because I didn't want them to have the life that I had. And Little Warriors, I actually did a media story today, and I'm like, why is that name? And I said, because, because kids that have been sexually abused are fighters. It's what they do. And for me, um, when I was, I was sexually abused by my grandfather from eight to 10 years old, and by the time I was 12, I sat on um, my dad's bathroom floor and contemplated my life. And that was the day that I decided to fight and become a Little Warrior. So the name Little Warriors comes from the fact that these children are fighters and survivors because they really do lose their innocence and their trust of adults. So this year we launched the My Name Is campaign and um, Chris, 
going to kill me, but that's okay. Hello. Chris was one of the brave 13 survivors that actually stood up and shared their story. So to give you an idea, I had 40 survivors that said, we're going to share our story. 27 of them were told by their families, no way. You're not going to bring shame to us. This is buried. This is done. And so Chris uh, stood beside me with 11 other people. And it was the first time ever across the country that 13 survivors of child sexual abuse stood beside each other to tell their stories and what happened. Um, it was an emotional four days. So we had a press conference in June to kick it off. And there's usually not any kids and stuff that we do. One of the things that we did in the ad campaign, ad, ad campaign, you'll notice that each of us is holding a picture frame. So I'm holding a picture of little Glory when she was abused. Chris is holding a picture of when he was a little boy at the age he was abused. So at the press conference, we gave everybody a picture of us when we were little so that they could connect to that we're adults now, but we were children then. So that day, there was a 12-year-old little girl that came to the press conference with her mother. And she came up to me and she said, um, you're Glory. And I said, yeah, I am. She's the only kid in the whole entire place. And she said, can I have your autograph? And I kind of, because she had my picture. So I thought, well, sure, I don't really want my autograph. I'm a mom, and, you know, but here you go. And so I signed it. And it wasn't long after that that her mom contacted me and said, um, do you know why my daughter wanted your autograph. And I said, no, and I'm not sure why she was there because it was a media press conference, it was for adults. This little girl had been sexually abused by her grandfather, same as me. She actually looked like me. So my picture of the age that I was and the age that she was, our stories were virtually the same. And I became friends with this family and this little girl was so brave, she went through zebra, she pressed charges against her grandfather, and uh, a year and a half into the process, her charges were stayed. So what happened is that everything got dropped after pretrial. So I've become quite close with this little family. And so what her mother did is said, you know what, I want to take the prevention program. I want to learn how to help prevent this you know, my daughter being sexually abused from happening to another kid. So the example is, this year, with the Minerva money, we trained 2,600 people on how to help prevent child sexual abuse. And this little girl, her mother, was one of them. Her mom now is also a facilitator, travels across the country, and teaches adults how to help prevent child sexual abuse. So she teaches our third-party evaluated research-based program. What, what should you look for if people are grooming your children? What are the signs and symptoms um, if a kid's being sexually abused? What if a kid tells you, what do you do? My mom grabbed a butcher knife. Not a good idea, right? Kids are already scared. But you understand if it was your child, how would you react? So this lady is, from her own tragedy with her daughter, is I'm going to stand up, I'm going to be involved. And those 2,600 people that we trained with the funds, for every adult trained in our program, impacts 10 kids. So 26,000 kids have been, been um, uh, put at less risk. This little girl also, then the mom, a couple of days ago on Facebook, she Facebooked me and she said, she wants to speak up. Never in my whole career, like I've had survivors say, listen, 13 of us, you know, we want to get involved. This mom said to me, you know what, she goes, we want, we want to get involved and we want to tell our story through Little Warriors. I have never had a mom or a child ever say we want to be involved and share our story. Um, and that's a big step because her family has already ostracized them, doesn't have anything to do with them, and here they're looking to help and contribute and to be, to be a voice, right? And so pretty amazing experience. Um, and honestly, without the help from Minerva, we wouldn't have been able to do that. Um, I'm sure Good Sam and uh, Youth Emergency Tech Shelter will tell you this last two years, have been very, very difficult for not-for-profits. 
With the recession, obviously, businesses get hit, um, but so do the not-for-profits. And um, I'm so grateful um, that we were one of the recipients because without the funds, you can't do the work. And um, you know, I'm so happy and so proud of the relationship and the work that Minerva does in the community. And you know, when I was kind of putting some notes together, I was thinking, you know, because I read the story about how Minerva got started, and you know, a little bit about you know Jean's philosophy about you know helping people that needed help and families. And you know, I thought just even sitting and hearing the other speakers is that. Um, you know, with her legacy and the work that all her friends have done, wouldn't she be so proud of all the things that everybody here has helped contribute to do? So, thank you. And I have a small gift. Um, this is the first one that we've given out. And I think last year we did, um, we had the Warriors made in glass. And I believe Minerva was the first to get it last year. And this is Jesse. And this is the doll last year, a um, little girl that wrote the song sang. And I want to tell you, this little boy, Jesse, um, is uh, this doll and this plaque represent my friend Chris. Because he's, very, he's one of the very few men that share their story. In the 13th, he was the only man to step forward and to share his story. Okay? And he's one of probably three across Canada. Okay, so this is very special, um, you know, because it represents Chris to me. It may have a different name, and it is the first one. They literally just got done. So I want to present this to Minerva, just as a small thank you for just everything that you've done. God bless. Thank you.